Children of Dune Dune Series 3 by Frank Herbert The Heirs of Dune In the arid, windswept dunes of Arrakis, Leto and Ganima, Atreides, stood side by side, their young eyes reflecting the twin moons that hung low in the night sky. They were the heirs of a legacy that stretched back generations, a lineage of power and prophecy that now rested on their slender shoulders. Leto, Ganima whispered, her voice barely audible over the howling wind, do you ever feel like we're just pawns in a game that started before we were born? Leto turned to his sister, his gaze steady. Sometimes, Gani. But remember what Grandmother Jessica taught us. We are our treaties, and we shape our own destiny. Their conversation was interrupted by the sudden arrival of their Aunt Aelia, her eyes wild with the madness that had slowly been consuming her. The voices, she hissed, clutching her head. They won't stop. They're tearing me apart. Ganima reached out, her hand hesitating in the air between them. Aunt Alia, let us help you. You don't have to fight them alone. But Alia recoiled, her expression one of fear and suspicion. No, you don't understand. The Baron, he's here inside my mind. He wants to control me, to use me to destroy everything we've built. Leto stepped forward, his own fears momentarily forgotten in the face of Alia's torment. We will find a way to silence him, Aunt. Together. It was then that Jessica arrived, her presence commanding and serene amidst the chaos. Children, Alia, we must unite. The future of Arrakis, of our family, depends on it. Alia, still trembling, looked up at her mother, a flicker of hope in her eyes. Mother... Can you truly save me from this curse? Jessica nodded, her voice firm. Yes, Alia, but you must trust me. Trust in the bean desert ways that have guided us for centuries. As the family gathered, forming a circle of strength and unity, they knew the road ahead would be fraught with danger. But they also knew that together, they could overcome any obstacle, any voice that dared to challenge the might of House Atreides. And so, under the watchful eyes of the moons and the endless desert, the heirs of Dune prepared to face their destiny, armed with the wisdom of their ancestors and the unbreakable bond of their bloodline. The game of power and prophecy continued. But now, Leto and Ganema were not just pieces on the board. They were players in their own right, ready to shape the future of their world. Bene Gesserit's Gambit In the cool, dimly lit chamber of the Arakeen Palace, Jessica sat across from Javid, her gaze piercing through the shadows. The air was thick with unspoken tension, a silent battlefield for the mind games they were about to play. Javid, Jessica began, her voice a soft melody that belied the steel within. I've been observing your work. Your dedication to the priesthood is commendable. Javid's eyes flickered, the only sign of his surprise. Lady Jessica, your praise is unexpected. I serve only as Alia commands. Of course, Jessica replied, a smile touching her lips. But significant shifts are afoot, and with them, the chance for advancement. Javid leaned forward, intrigued despite himself. What kind of advancement do you speak of? Jessica's eyes narrowed slightly and she leaned in, her voice dropping to a whisper that carried the weight of secrets. An advancement for those astute enough to recognize it. Tell me, Javid, have you ever contemplated the full scope of influence your role holds? Javid's mind raced. Jessica's reputation as a Bene Gesserit and a master strategist was well known. Her words were never without purpose. I am a devout servant of the Regent, he said cautiously. Yet I am aware that my position grants me access to influential circles. And yet, a man of your talents could shape the future of Arrakis in ways Alia may not foresee. Jevid's heart quickened. Was this an offer? A test? He knew better than to trust a Bene Gesserit outright, but the lure of power was tempting. 
Continue, Lady Jessica, he said, masking his eagerness with a veneer of calm. Jessica stood, her movements graceful and deliberate. Walk with me, Javid. There are matters to discuss that these walls should not hear. They moved through the ornate corridors, the intricate stone mosaics underfoot whispering tales of ancient Arrakis. As they walked, Jessica spoke of ecology, of politics, and of the future, a future where Javid could play a pivotal role. With each word, she wove a tapestry of potential, using her voice to outline a vision of a united Arrakis, thriving under a new paradigm. Javid listened, his mind alight with the implications of her words. By the time they returned to the chamber, he was no longer just a pawn in Elia's game. He was a player in his own right with a newfound ally in Jessica. Earlier in the chapter, as Jessica prepared for her meeting with Javid, Leto and Ganema had been briefly mentioned, their keen eyes observing from a discreet vantage point. Now, in the shadows, unseen, they exchanged a glance. Their aunt's gambit was unfolding as planned, a move that would secure their survival and the future of their house. The Game of Thrones on Arrakis had just taken a turn and they were ready to play. Echoes of the Past In the dimly lit chambers of the Arakeen Palace, Alia Atreides stood resolute, her mind a fortress against the Baron's insidious whispers. She had fortified her rule with Freeman traditions and political cunning, ensuring that no ghost of the past could undermine her authority. With a strategic move, she dispatched her most trusted spies to the far reaches of the Imperium, seeking to discredit House Carino and solidify her power. Meanwhile, Ganema and Leto, aware of the precarious balance their aunt maintained, plotted their daring ruse and set the golden path into motion. A vision of a future where humanity would be free from the threat of extinction they would need to vanish from the public eye. Their plan was meticulous. They would leave behind personal effects in the deep desert, staging a sandworm attack that would leave no doubt of their tragic fate. As the twins prepared to enact their plan, a new player emerged from the shadows of the palace. Ixian Envoy, Hidarfen Ajidika, arrived under the guise of a diplomatic mission his true intentions veiled by a web of intrigue. His presence added a layer of complexity to the already tense atmosphere as he sought to uncover the secrets of Arrakis for his own inscrutable purposes. Stilgar, the Fremen Naib, watched over the palace with a heavy heart. He understood the necessity of the twins' gambit, yet the thought of losing the heirs to the throne weighed heavily on him. As a leader, he had seen many sacrifices, but the potential loss of Leto and Ganema was a price he prayed they would not have to pay. As dawn broke, Alia's resolve hardened. She would not yield to the darkness that sought to claim her. The future whispered of hope of a path she could forge with her own will, and she stepped forward to meet it, leaving the echoes of the past behind. The Preacher's Shadow In the heart of Arakeen, a voice resonated through the marketplace, drawing the attention of the citizens. The rulers and gods are mere illusions, the voice declared, urging the people to see beyond the deceptions. Jessica, the mother of Muadib, stood among the crowd, her presence a silent testament to the unfolding events. Her keen eyes observed the reactions of the people each murmur and nod signifying the shifting tides of belief and power on a rocket. As the day waned, the voice spoke of change and the dawn of a new era, one where the people of Dune could shape their own destinies. With the setting sun casting a golden hue over the city, the citizens of Arakeen were left to contemplate their role in the future of their world. The message of empowerment lingered in the air, a beacon of hope for those daring to dream of a path forged by their own will. The Desert's Lure The night whispered secrets of the desert, and Leto Atreides, heir to Arrakis, was drawn to the rocky sentinels under the starlit sky. His frim and grace was evident as he navigated the terrain, where a family of Jerboa reminded him of life's delicate balance on this planet. 
As dawn's fiery hues spread across the horizon, Leto stood atop a dune, contemplating a historic rock formation, a symbol of his father's legacy and the future's burden. The landscape was still mirroring his contemplation of the plans he and Ganima had set in motion. With the sun's ascent, Leto sought refuge in his still tent, pondering the visions that haunted him. Rest was fleeting, a luxury in the face of the tasks ahead. Evening brought a whisper of change. Leto sensed the impending Coriolis storm, its electric scent heralding chaos and renewal. He stood ready to confront it, but the desert had other plans. A sudden force pulled him down, not a trap vine, but a figure from the shadows. Leto trade as the figure spoke. You are a difficult man to find. Calm despite his racing heart, Leto replied, Your skills are evident. State your purpose. The figure, removing Leto's gear, revealed. I seek the same as you, Leto. The golden path's fruition. Suspicion narrowed Leto's eyes. Who sent you? The Bene Gesserit? My grandmother? A gleam in the fading light, the figure answered. Consider me an ally in your family's cause. Now we must depart. The storm nears and our discourse is vital. Led away, Leto's mind whirled with the game's larger scope. This capture was a calculated move, aligning with his and Ganema's ruse of death. A step on the golden path that was just beginning. The Sandworm's Air. The desert of Arrakis was unforgiving. A vast sea of sand that could swallow entire armies. Yet it was here, amidst the relentless dunes, that Leto Atreides too found his destiny. The young heir to house Atreides had always known he was different. Leto, are you sure about this? Ganima, his twin sister, asked with a worried frown. Her voice was almost lost in the howling wind. I have to be. Leto replied, his eyes reflecting the golden hue of the desert. The golden path is the only way to save humanity. Ganima nodded, her heart heavy with the knowledge of what her brother was determined to do. Together they would face the challenges ahead, united by blood and purpose. And so, the sands of Iraqi shifted, heralding the dawn of a new era. The Golden Path Unveiled In the heart of the Arrakis desert, under the relentless twin suns, Leto Atreides stood atop a colossal sand dune. Beside him, his sister Ganima watched silently. Leto turned to her, his expression resolute. I must, Ganima, for Arrakis, for our people, for the future. With a nod of understanding, Ganima stepped back as Leto approached the edge of the dune. He raised his arms and the sands around him began to stir. A low rumble echoed through the desert as a massive sandworm breached the surface, its gaping maw open wide. Shai Holud, Leto whispered, using the Fremen term for the sacred beast. Guide me on the golden path. The sandworm towered over him, yet Leto showed no fear. He leaped from the dune, landing deftly on the worm's back. With practiced movements, he bound himself to the creature. As Leto rode the sandworm, a group of Fremen emerged from their sea etches to witness the spectacle. Among them was the preacher, a mysterious figure whose words carried the weight of prophecy. It is, and more, a voice called out from the crowd. It was Jessica responding to the preacher's unspoken question. The preacher nodded solemnly. He will face many trials, but he must not falter. The golden path is treacherous, and only he can walk it. Ganima watched her brother disappear into the distance, her heart heavy with pride and sorrow. May the sands be kind to you, Leto, she murmured. A new empire's dawn. The sun of Arrakis rose, casting a golden hue over the vast desert, signaling the dawn of a new era. In the royal chambers, 
Leto Atreides stood before a large, ornate window, his gaze fixed on the horizon. His sister Ganima joined him, her eyes reflecting the same determination. Leto, do you think the people will accept the changes? Ganima asked, her voice tinged with concern. They must, Leto replied firmly. As we discussed earlier, the Golden Path is our shared destiny and the future of humanity. The door to the chamber opened and their grandmother Jessica entered, her presence commanding yet comforting. The Freemen are with us, she announced. And Duncan has secured the loyalty of the Swordmasters. Leto nodded, his mind racing with plans and visions. We will need all the allies we can get. Ganimam moved closer to her brother, placing a hand on his arm. And what of Faradin? Will he stand by us? Jessica's eyes softened. He has learned much from me. He understands the importance of balance and control. He will be a valuable ally. As they spoke, a group of Freeman leaders entered the chamber, their still suits dusty from the desert. They bowed respectfully to Leto and Ganima. We are ready to follow you, Leto, one of them said. You have shown us a vision of Iraqis that we never thought possible. Leto's eyes glinted with the reflection of the rising sun. Then let us begin. Today we walk the golden path together. Outside, the people of Arrakis gathered. Their eyes turned towards the royal palace. Whispers of change and a new beginning spread like wildfire. And as Leto and Ganima stepped out onto the balcony, the cheers of the crowd rose up to meet them. With unity and a shared vision for the future, the hopes and dreams of the people were ready to embrace their destiny. The golden path lay ahead, winding and uncertain, but for the first time in generations there was light on the horizon. And it was a light that would guide humanity towards a new dawn.